I'm Dixie Hibbs, and I have spoken to the audience many times, mostly about history. Today I have to have a confession to make. I'm a fabriholic. I know that sounds silly, but I am addicted to fabric. And my addiction has caused me to collect fabric for 50 years. I make things from it. I uh, tell other people how to do things. I make tote bags and sell them. I make um, all kinds of odds and ends, and I'll tell you a little more about that. But I want to show you what I've decided to do with the leftovers of my 50-year collection. I have a large house, but three rooms of my house are full of fabric and crafts. Nobody needs three rooms of fabrics and crafts. I am sharing all of the different things you'll see behind me today, plus 50% more at a sale that will take place two weeks from today on Thursday, the July 9th. It starts out in the morning at 10 o'clock and we go on until Saturday afternoon at 3. So you've got two or three chances to come and visit me and take home some of my treasures. I'm standing next to tote bags. These are all made of cotton. They're made with different patterns on them. Uh, I have John Deere. I have uh, the um, motorcycles. I have Thomas the Tank. I have a cow on this side and others through here. I have lots of those. They're five dollars each. I sold hundreds of them for ten, but these I have left over. There's nothing wrong with them, but they are a good price. Down here I have quilts. I have quilts that are ready to be used, nothing wrong with them, and I have what we call cutter quilts. And cutter quilts are raggedy. They have problems, big problems. But I take the cutter quilts and I make runners, I make pads for a table. I make tote bags. I also uh, will use pieces of them to repair quilts that uh, people bring me, and I already have some. Uh, I repair the old quilts with the old fabric. So when I get through repairing a quilt, often you can't even find what I did because I use fabric of the period of the quilt. I have new quilts. All of these that I'm selling you are going to be $100 or less. Now, they've been more. And some of them are machine quilted, some of them are hand embroidery, but I have over 50 quilts I'll be bringing to resell. And like I said, they'll be $100 or less. Then I have the pieces I've cut up. I've cut these pieces out of those cutter quilts. And they range from a size like this, which makes a great hot pad to put on a table, or a little miniature if you've got a doll bed and a little doll, this makes a darling little doll quilt. And they'll be raggedy like this. That doesn't look like you can do much with it, but in a few minutes I'll show you what you can do with it to make something very useful. I probably have 300 pieces like this, different colors, different designs. Now, if you buy something that is unfinished like this, and there's nothing wrong with it, this could be a throw, could be a runner, but what's wrong, it needs to be finished on the edge. Well, I have the binding. You can buy this piece, and then you can buy the binding to finish it. This is 15 cents for this binding. Now that sounds terrible, terribly cheap, not terribly expensive. This is 50. So maybe this is too expensive because you're getting four times as much here. But I have bindings, I have ribbons, I have ruffles. I have this whole box here is full of ribbons and ruffles. I like to travel and you know when you like to travel you bring back some souvenir. Well I bring back fabric. Nobody needs as much fabric as I bring back. And this piece of fabric came from Holland. What makes it interesting to me was the fact it was the end of a run. When I say the end, they had two different colors, same pattern, and they were weaving it in two colors. So that gave me the opportunity to get double the fabric. It's really wide, so we're 60 inches wide. Two different fabrics on one piece. I did not finish making anything out of this and I have it for sale and it's thirty dollars which is a bargain. There are uh, it's four yards so that makes it seven fifty a yard and this is woven in Holland and it makes your conversation thing. All of the things right here are upholstery things. Behind me you know when I shop I like a little organization. I like to dig. And most people who go yard selling and all that, they like to dig through things. Well, I'm going to give you the opportunity to dig, opportunity to dig 
because all of these fabrics behind me are solids. They're small solids. There's bigger pieces, different colors, different weights. This is almost a, a uh, skirt weight or a uh, purse weight, kind of thing. It's a little heavier. But all of these behind me are solids, all the way down to the floor. And then we have the prints. Now, you know and I know, if you go shopping for fabric, the prints catch your eye. It's just what you're thinking. What can I do with this, or what can I do with that? Well, I have that same problem. I have simple things. I even have this piece that would make a beautiful skirt. It's uh, almost two yards, 60 inches wide, and it's $6. And it's, uh, a moder it's more of a dressmaking thing than it is like quilting. But anyone who deals in crafts, making things from fabric, uh, putting things together, whether you're decorating a t-shirt or you're doing um, some, some project that you have to have a lot of different pieces. I told one lady one day she wanted to make an I Spy quilt. If you, any of you don't know what I Spy is a game, and an I Spy quilt is one you put together with lots of different little figures, like an, different animals, windmills, wagons, trucks, cars, and you do them to where when you play the game with your child, they have to look for that figure on that quilt. This is a perfect collection for I Spy because all of this are prints. All of these in here are prints, Christmas, country, I have country prints, I have quil uh, quilting prints, I have feed sack. Now feed sacks, a lot of people think feed sacks are like uh, animal feed, but they actually were chicken feed sacks. They were used in the 30s and 40s to make clothes, to make curtains. But first of all, they came to you in a bag. It was a sack, as they say. The sack was sewn up, had a print on the outside, and you had your chicken feed in it, which was cracked corn mostly. You fed your chickens, you took the sack apart, and you had a big piece of fabric about this wide, about this, that long, this wide. All right. These are feed sacks, beautiful patterns. People would, uh, I remember my grandfather would go to the Isis produce, actually, to get chicken feed. Well, my grandmother would say, I want blue fabric. How many do you need, he'd say. I need seven. I'm doing curtains for the kitchen. She knew how big they were, she knew how far they'd go. So he would go and get two different feed sacks, like this. These are the same print on two different sacks. And that's what you had to be careful of. If you were trying to get more than one bag, make sure you got the same print on the different bags. These are a whole sack here. I'm not going to open it up, but if you'd like to see it sometime, they will be at this sale in an eye uh, space all its own. All of this will be on tables. You don't have to get leaned down on the floor or anything. You'll have chairs to sit in. You actually have some beverage refreshments because there's nothing makes you drier than looking at fabric. And you'll be talking to other people who will give you ideas. We, the prints go all the way up to here. And then I want to tell you about a couple of crafts that I discovered I like to do. And I'm, I'm sharing the ideas because they're so simple. And in this day, when we're doing all this staying at home with our families and all, this is a good way to teach your, your granddaughter, your grandson, sewing, making things, crafting with things. And when you look at the old patterns, the old quilting patterns, there's a story in all of them. This, of course, is called Log Cabin. If you look at it, this is the center of the house, the hearth. And then all the logs are laid around it. All the old quilts had different names for their patterns, and they always had a reason for it. So sometimes you look at it and figure out what was this and what was that. This was a, a quilt top piece, and it started out like this. You see there are two identical frames. These are wooden frames. I have about 40 of them, and I'm going to have those for sale for a dollar a piece. And if you, it doesn't fit your picture, what you want to do is cover it with a little bit of cotton or padding, or a piece of quilt that's already cut that would go on it, maybe like this. This is a cutter piece, it would go on it. Or you could take this side of the, of the piece, which is in good shape, and put on here, and then put some of your family treasures. Your grandmother may have crocheted a beautiful doily, but what are you going to do with a doily today? The dog's going to run off with it if you put it on the table. So you could take and put those things on here and make a piece of wall art 
that has memories, that has something to do with your family. Now, how do you get it on the back? Well, you find a piece that's big enough that you wrap it around the back like this and you staple it. And it makes it stiff or smooth to where you can add things to it. But I wanted to let you know I'm going to have the, the uh, uh, picture frames and they'll be for sale. Here's another thing I did with, this is just a piece of wood. This is great for a hot plate. Put it on your table. If you've got a nice table and you don't want to set a hot pot on it, you can put this old piece of fabric, which is a, a quill from the 1890s. But it's so shabby, I cut it up. When I say shabby, it's shabby. But it won't hurt to decorate your kitchen. Put a piece on the back if you want. Lots of ideas there. Now, I'm gonna, I want to show you up here on my bookcase. At the very top, that was a crochet doily, the red and beige, and it was big. I took that doily, I dipped it in, in glue, Elmer's glue, I got it wet first. Get it wet first, squeeze it out, dip it in Elmer's glue, put it over a bowl or a wastebasket or something, but before you put it over there, put plastic, like a, a grocery bag, on the wastebasket. So when it finally dries, you can pull it off. Otherwise, you're gluing your doily to the wastebasket. But that, hap that is one of the things that you can do with our vintage linens that we'll talk about. You'll also see big bowls and little bowls made from quilts. These quilts had a, a problem with it, one way or the other. And it started out like this in a circle. This was an unusual circle because it has two different quilt tops on it. One's on this side and one's on this side. So that's really a bargain. You get two patterns with one cut. And in the very center of this, they had a woven blanket. This is very old. This is probably a hand-woven blanket, but it was already gone before I got it. We take something like this, put it over something like a, a solid bowl, and it comes out looking like that. Now, I have them already made. And I also have kits for them that you can make them yourself in different sizes. I have them where you can get two in a package for that size, or you can get one big one like that for the same thing. They're all $5, and we, you get to pick out what you want. The other thing, I'm giving you the idea free, so you, if you find some cutter quilts pieces and you like those, figure out if, how big a uh, bowl you can make from them. The nice thing about the bowls, they don't break. If your children knock them off something, not a big deal. It's not going to make much noise. And they're handy. You can put uh, wrapped candies in them, or you can do uh, use a, a set of bowl inside of them and put something. I had one lady put a bowl inside, and she put a plant, separate plant in it, and that worked nicely. Again, they're not a big, expensive project. But I wanted to talk to you about a project using vintage linens. Now, vintage linens are old linens. They're usually something grandmother made. She gave it to your mother. Your mother didn't know what to do with it. She put it in the cedar chest. And now it's your turn to do something with it. We don't use paper. We don't use cloth napkins anymore, very seldom. We don't use uh, the cloth towels, the tea towels for the kitchen or the towels for the bathrooms. And so, but they're too good to throw away. And many of them have had hours of work done on them. Monogramming by hand, embroidery, uh, doing all these different things. This is just a little tiny doily that has butterflies on it. Well, what would I do with that doily? Well, what I'd want you to do is to take it, refold it, and make it into something you can use. And what you're going to be able to use it for is a shoulder bag. And you know what? these. Ziploc bags are not what they're cut out to be. I just tore that one. So let's try again. This is uh, what they call Swedish weaving embroidery. Huck, this is a piece of what Huck toweling. And I made, I don't know, 20 or 30 of these in the 1960s. We aren't using them because nobody wants to wash them. But this actually was a towel. I cut it in half. I folded it here and all along here. Now here's the good thing about these vintage linens and towels. They have finished edges. And if you're making something that you're folding back and forth, this top is a, turn, is a finished edge on the bottom. This side is finished and all I've done is folded this up so I could top stitch from here to here to here. 
And I could, yes, and I stitch right here to make the four. I have Velcro inside, which zips open, and inside I have two pockets that were made by folding the bottom up. So all I'm trying to say is take a napkin or a towel that maybe have something interesting in your life or your family's life and see if you can refold it for something like a shoulder bag. It's another shoulder bag. Same idea. It's how you fold it. This was woven. This was not hand done. This was a woven one. The Velcro just closes it up for you. It's not hard to do and it's usually hidden. This one on my lap, I kept thinking about wedding when I did this one. It seemed like me something that somebody could use at a wedding. Now I have a long ribbon on it because today most of us they want to have if they're going to be working around shopping or want their hands free they can hang it down that low and some people are a little heavier than I am it actually pulls it up so I've got plenty of ribbon on this but you can always tighten a bow if you need to and this is machine washable this is a very nice again velcro little pocket outside pocket inside put your phone in there if you want to take it to church and not make it look, it has a pocket on each side. You can tell I'm old, I like pockets, but I guess everybody likes pockets. Now, this was one of the more in, unusual ones I tried. This is a piece of crochet. And crochet was heavy, and it was long. It was uh, almost square, but not quite. And so I folded it, and I top stitched it across the bottom and the side. And I folded the top down because when I started working on it, I realized this was pink and this is white. So the edge of it was pink. How do I close it up? I didn't want to put Velcro on it. So I took a little uh, piece of jewelry and made it something that hung down. And then I took a piece of thin elastic I've been using to make mask, sewed it in there, and then I pulled this over and that closes your, your purse. You don't have to worry about it coming open and falling out. What I'm doing with the vintage is just trying to show there is value in it to reuse. You also can use them to make pillows. Where did my pillow go? Ah, oh, here's my pillow. I actually made two pillows. These two pillows were each end of a runner. Now, the runner in the middle, and even some of this, has some stains on it. Bad stains. I couldn't get these out. But it's kind of like the age marks we women and men all carry as we get older. If you've got any age on you, you're a little bit darker in spots. This was such beautiful crochet. Anybody that crochets can see how much work went into this. I did not want to throw it away. I did not want to uh, give it to somebody that didn't know what to do with it. So I cut it off. I took a piece of linen, which I had in my stash, made a little in a purse that I just sewed it in the top and then anchored it this way. Now, what do you do with a little pillow? Well, if you've ever sit down at a chair and you want to just lean your head back, sometimes your head didn't go back. That works. This also is something we like to use. If you've got a brooch or a pen and you want to keep it out where you're going to wear it again, you can stick it in here. You can put some of your jewelry on here if you want to. Even you could display grandmother's jewelry on one. Take a piece of her vintage linen she'd made, make you a pillow or make you a, a piece over your um, picture frame and put some of her her handwork and some of her jewelry and her picture on that and that'll be something when you walk by every day she'll smile at you down up in heaven she'll think well that was a good deal kind of thing I make big pillows like this because some of the crochet and all is really big you just don't really want to cut it but there's all people appreciate looking back and seeing what needle people did now here's another this is made from a quilt a piece of quilt that all right it was this long and it was like half a star. I couldn't use it for a pillow because it didn't look just right. It was in decent shape. And here's the actual top of it. I didn't even have to do anything there but put the Velcro in. And inside of it was feed sack. Now, I know everybody thinks we're all intrigued with feed sack, but we are. It's because it was a utility item that women made into art, to an artist. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say there. It's like an artist having paint. So women took the seed, the feed sacks, and they put them together in beautiful creations as quilts, as runners, clothes. One of my first early clothes, I remember it when I was about six years old, 
was a feed sack pattern that had little windmills and Dutch girls on it. Tiny, tiny pattern. I've never seen it since. I've always looked when I go through the feed sacks to see if that might be one. This is a piece of tape. I say tape, woven tape, not uh, masking tape. I've used a lot of that. I didn't iron this, but this is a piece of tape that made your, your handle for it. These are all washable, but the thing I think I like best about them is that we're reusing something. We're not throwing it away. The quilts can start like this. This is one piece. What do I do with that? Okay, this is a new quilt, a modern quilt. I take it this way. I take it and sew it down, turn it inside out, put ribbon on it for handle, sh shoulder handle or a short handle, and it's done. I mean, it's like a two-step process. If you want Velcro, you sew that in. If you want a button, you can put a button in a buttonhole. What you do is you put your buttonhole here, you put your button in here, and you slip the button through when you want to close it. You may think all I do is think about things to do with fabric, and you're right, because I'll see a piece of fabric, and it inspires me to do something with it. If you've got a little boy living on a farm, this is called uh, What Happens on a Tractor Stays on My Tractor. It's, um, it's a red tractor, so it's not John Deere. But I do have John Deere fabric, and I do have farm all. I have country fabric, things of cows and chickens and um, horses. I got horses, I got goats, I got, I got Superman. I mean, really, as I went through my stash, I couldn't believe all of the different patterns I have. Some of them go back to the uh, 1970s. Some of them go to the 1930s, where I have found them and bought them. This little thing is just a little bag for a boy to carry his trucks, toys, or whatever in. But these made out of solid fabric with this sewn on top of it. And I have lots of pieces like this. I call them borders. And they have cats, dogs, horses, stars, all kinds, quarter a piece. And they're about two yards long. So you can almost make a child's quilt out of all the strips like that. Behind me, you see a completed quilt. This is hand quilted. This is overcast stitching, which is a buttonhole stitch. Somebody did a lot of work here. But when they stored their quilt, they laid it where the sun faded this. You see? That's a major flaw. This quilt is $100, which may seem like too much. It's not real heavy. It's more of a summer quilt. But when you spread it out on a bed, you may see this, and you may not. It depends on how big your bed is and where you put it. But either way, you have the advantage of hand quilting, pretty colors, something to use. It's a double quilt. In other words, a double bed quilt, like that. Or you can cut it up and use it some other way. But it had been $125, and now I've got it at $100. In fact, my sale, I'm working really hard to make it everything under $100. Now, you could walk out there with a bushel basket full of stuff for less than $100. I didn't mention the books I have in front here. Uh, I have over 50 different uh, quilt books, how, how, how to quilt, uh, how to research, all kinds of patterns. I have machine quilting. I have uh, Quilter's Complete Guide. These are just five or six of the boxes of books that I'm taking. I'm going to sell my books $2 for a soft cover. And a lot of them are soft covers. This one actually uh, was $20 when it was new. So it'll be $2. Then I have hard covers that will be $3. But I want to share this. I'm, I'm not going to be able to make all the things in those quilts, all those books. So I want to share those with other people who'd like to. Behind me, I'm still making shoulder bags. My sister said I get obsessed with something and I can't make one or two. I have to make 25. And she's probably right. I get intrigued on what can I do. Right here is a placemat. It's got nice stripes on the back, nice little print on the front. It's a good size. It's a little tall, so let's turn that down. Well, let's do this to it. Let's make it stripes on the outside, and we'll turn down the, the flyer part. You know, that doesn't look too, too difficult. And then I'm going to line up the sides, because I don't have to do anything but top stitch these sides. And when I get through by putting a, this on, I have a tote. I have a shoulder tote with Velcro inside that doesn't show because you've sold it before you've turned it down. Not too heavy. Big enough to put my phone, my billfold, my mask, 
maybe a couple of masks because I might need that. And it started out as a placemat. I have lots of placemats. I have lots of decorative items, napkins. Oh, a napkin. I forgot about the napkin. I keep thinking about weddings, and I'm not sure why. I think most of mine are married somewhere or other. Uh, but this is a damask napkin. This kind is 100 years old. Beautiful, white, has a pattern on it. I folded it into thirds. It was too big to be double, so I made it into thirds. I have three folds here. I took a, a white satin ribbon, which was too wide, folded it and sewed it. And then I had these little bows that are here with my notions, the zippers, the decorative things that I have for sale. I had a whole bag of bows. So I took the bows and put on there. And what I have, again, is a nice white summer purse dressed up. I know I, I should make some of these for little girls because I think little girls would love to drag one around like this. But that's made from one napkin. This was made from a placemat, and I thought I had it out here, but I don't, so. Both of these, they're two placemats. This one, I appliqued, stitch it by hand very lightly. You can put your fingers under it and it moves, you know. Uh, this is a brown cotton that had a, a uh, fringe at both, side, both ends. You see fringe here and fringe there. Again, the way you fold things, and I tell people, just keep folding, it'll come to you how you want to do it. This has a pocket on each side outside, and I had these jewelry pieces that I had, so I sewed those on to trim them. And this, of course, is an old doily. And I put it on and wrapped it around to the other side, so it doesn't matter which side, you've got some decoration. And you have three pockets inside. You have two here, and then one here that's Velcroed. So you've got one you can put your sunglasses in that you're going to reach in and pull them out. Another for your phone. In the middle, you can put your money. These sell for 5 and $6. They, uh, I have them in a shop I am in, but I also like the idea of other people being able to use all these wonderful finished things. This was a placemat. If you want to give your favorite teacher something, you can fill that up with, with nice things. You could even fill it up with hand sanitizers and Kleenex. And I bet she'd appreciate that, too. But that, again, is washable. This is just a piece of, of woven tape. They're not very heavy, which makes it nice, because by the time you get through putting things in it, they usually get heavy. Behind me, I have quilt tops. I'm going to stand up, because I want you to see how many different ones I have. I didn't make any of these. Now, the things that I make are mostly small items. I do not make full quilts. I repair full quilts. But these are all, you know, we talked about, again, these are, uh, some of this is uh, feed sack and some of it's just patterns from the 1940s, I think. 1940s squares. You can take it apart and use it some other way, or you can finish it up. There's a sunshine patch. Here's what they call churn dash. Now that looks modern to me. That looks like something would go in today's uh, gray and black decorating. This is, uh, this is a queen size top also. That is $35, and the, uh, this one is $30. Really, the $30 hardly pays for the uh, fabric. Over here, I still have more simple patches. And then we have, uh, I was looking for, oh, this is called spool. And spools, if you look real close, you'll see a spool of thread. See right here? That's called spool of thread. And all of these are about 35 this, this one's $30. Here's pink if you want to decorate your child's room. I shouldn't say that. Decorate your boy's room if you want to in the pink. Oh, no, this is better for boys. And this is better. These all have to be finished, or you can take and make them into curtains. You can hang them up hem the sides, hang them up over a window, and use it as a curtain. I'm about around here, I think, talking about everything. These are quilt blocks. I was going to do something with these quilt blocks, probably make something. There are 10 pieces in here. They came from the 1890s. They're over 100 years old. Nothing wrong with them. They're all hand-pieced. You're sitting there looking at that heavy thread, wondering, did she do that in front of a kerosene lamp, or was she out in the sunshine when she did it? Probably under the kerosene lamp, because she was too busy in the sunshine canning and milking the cow and stuff. But I have quite a few of 
sets like these and also singles. You just want to do a simple, um, this is called Snowball, and it's a dollar. Now, I would not put that together for you for a dollar, but I got a good price on it, so I'm sharing it. The other things are bigger pieces. This is a piece that someone has put together to a point. It's called, a, it's called an odd piece. How about that? That's a good term for it. But what it is, it's long enough to do something with, but it's been cut on. Now that's my kind of piece. I go to a yard sale and I scarf these up like they're candy. But you can take and cut out of here, make circles, you can make squares, you can make some of the shoulder bags I showed you, put denim on the back, or buy a denim bag and put something on it. We have lots of iron-ons. Now iron-ons are fabric that you've ironed something on the back and cut out a design, and you iron it on another fabric, and it makes it uh, stay. Most of the time it's I still will sew around it, but I have bags and bags of iron-ons that I've cut. Some of them are in the old quilt tops that have hearts on them. Some of them are actually quilted hearts that you can use. What else is on here? Well, this is a modern quilt. This is $30. It's not real long. It has the, the kind of uh, country look to it. This is a Dresden plate. Now, this has been cut down. When we say cut down, that means there was a terrible section I could not fix, and I cut it off and cut it down. But right now, nice light colors, hand done, 1930s, 54 by 54. It's a big square, $65. And it's been completely rebacked. This fabric on the back is new. Uh, again, a thing, this is $100. It's called Hen and Chicks. It's kind of crazy item, but this was, a lady came the other day, she kept saying, what is that? I don't know if you've ever slept under a Chanel bedspread, but I have several years. They were real popular in the 30s and 40s and 50s. This is unusual, and it has different colors, like this, this pattern, and that is $35. And this is velveteen. I couldn't pass this up. This felt so good. It has it on the back, has kind of a fleece. You can use this in your, in your living room or your den, and it has two pillow shams to go with it, and it's $35. Now, as you can tell, I have more than I could ever sew up, even though I'm trying. I'm in there sewing today, but I need people to come, and I'll help them uh, choose things. I'll help them match things, and uh, if there's any questions about anything we make or that you want to make, I'll have kits for the bowls. I have, uh, I'll be glad to, to work with anybody like that. The other thing has nothing to do with, with the material. <clears throat> a lot of people ask me where, I can, where they can get my history books. I'm going to have all that I have available now that are out, not out of print at this sale. That will be separate on a table. And you can, if you haven't got one or if you don't think you've got one, come look it up because I uh, try to keep in stock everything that I still have. Uh, I've been very fortunate that I've had to have some second printings where people liked them well enough I had to, to go and print them again. I don't know, oh, if you have any questions, I always, I, the whole thing's been a commercial so I can't say this is a commercial, but if you have any questions about the sale and uh, time and everything, uh, please call me. Now first of all, the sale is July 9th, which is a Thursday, from 10 to 6. The 10th is a Friday. And that's from 9 to 6. And Saturday, it's 9 to 3. We are renting a Presbyterian Church building, and we need to be out of there uh, that evening, so we have to stop at 3. But if you haven't had a chance to get by by Saturday, come on by. There'll be lots of bargains by then, too. The patterns, the, the thread, buttons, anything you would need to sew, I have. Now, I don't know how long it'll last, because I've been using a lot of up myself, but I've got it. And I want to invite you to come and have a nice day in Bardstown. You can come shop with me, leave, and come back. We'll even hang on to all your stuff while you're gone, like that. My name is Dixie Hibbs, and I want you to come see me July 9th, 10th, and 11th, and share my love of fabric, and maybe I can show you some more things that I've made that I didn't get to today. Thank you.